HTTP2 added header compression, and we've had body compression for a long time on responses from servers. But for some reason, we're not doing a very good job of compressing data going to the server from the browser. Let's mash on that. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. Today Simon will be telling us how to, I guess, make our data smaller when we're sending it to the server. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I ran into this problem the other day on an application uh, that was sending back and forth pretty large chunks of data to Cosmos from the web browser. So the idea behind this application was basically that you would load the application and it would pull a whole bunch of data down from Cosmos and let you edit it in the, the web browser. And then when you were done, it would just send like this huge great push of data back to Cosmos again. Uh, and I mean, there's architectural problems with that. Uh, but the problem that I was running into was that we were sending something like 250 kilobytes every time we saved this page. Uh, which was a lot and it was in JSON format. So there was a lot of kind of duplicate data in there that I felt could probably be compressed pretty nicely. So I was like, oh, so Simon, yeah. I, I have to ask because this sounds really familiar. Is this in an application that I wrote? It might be an application that you wrote okay. <laughs> <laughs> that I am now Sorry maintaining. Yeah, so we, we'd already taken some steps to make things a little bit smaller when we sent it. It used to be that we would send like uh, the entire payload of the entire uh, application up, and that was like two megabytes. megabytes. Yeah. Um, so we, we did a first step where we split it up into smaller chunks, but the chunks were still like 250 kilobytes, uh, which for somebody on like fiber connection, not a big deal, but if you're out in the field or you're on a cell phone or something like that, then it's like, it's a huge thing to, to send back over the wire. Um, so I went and I was like, well, we, we already compress stuff, our bodies coming back from the server and we compress headers. That must be built in compression for bodies going to the server. I just don't have it turned on somewhere. Uh, and I couldn't find any like consistent way of doing it. Like I had just assumed this would be something that would be in the HTTP protocols and it wasn't. Um, and even more interesting here. So I have, uh, I put together an application here very quickly that sends a bunch of JSON data over the wire. Let's make that a little bit bigger, not that it does anything. Um, so when I hit this button here, we're going to send a bunch of data up here. Oh, I got a breakpoint there. Let's take that out for, for now. Uh, and so that is sending some amount of data over the wire right now. Uh, so if you open it up and you take a look at the payload that we're sending, we're sending like a bunch of data here. So the first thing that I wanted to do was come into the tools here and see like how much data am I actually sending to the server? There is no way that I have found of showing that in the developer tools inside of uh, what I'm using here is Edge. Uh, so I don't know if I'm just missing something, if somebody can find some setting that I haven't turned oh. on. There's the size there. So That's size the is the amount of data that is coming back from the server. So oh. in this oh. case, my endpoint happens to be mirroring the the data coming back. So I know that I'm actually getting back 26.8 kilobytes off of the server. Gotcha. Um, but the data being sent, I couldn't find it anywhere. So I ended up pulling out Fiddler for this. Hmm. Um, and this is, I, I feel like I'm making a newer version of Fiddler out there, but I'm on Fiddler Classic uh, because how could things get any better than this fabulous user interface? You know, there was a, there was a time when I Fiddler was just part of my startup routine. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't lean on it very much, but I do from time to time. So it's still a handy tool. Here we have uh, a request going here, the request body size here. So I'm sending about thirteen hundred and forty-six bytes across the wire here. So this request body size isn't even like a field that's normally shown in Fiddler. You have to go in and like manually add this column in through customizing columns. And it takes a little bit to even find it in here. I think it was under like miscellaneous or something. Um, 
So yeah, not really even a good way to see the data that's going across the wire uh, in your browser. So then I was like, well, we should probably look at compressing this data because it's so big. Uh, and well, because there's no standard built into it, I kind of ended up rolling my own. Uh, so that was a bit of a two-step process. So the first thing that I ended up doing was coming in here and taking a look at what I was sending. So this is a really uh, simplistic version of what I was sending here. Uh, but I'm basically sending like a bunch of data here that I stole off of some website when I searched for large JSON payload. Um, but I'm just stringifying that body and sending it over the wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to steal this little bit of code that I have hidden down here uh, and drop that in here and comment it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check and make sure that first of all, the body that I'm sending isn't empty. Then I'm going to stringify that body and then I'm going to check the length of it. So uh, I, I stole some of the implementation of this off of a blog entry that somebody had done. And he was saying that the when you ended up sending kind of like less than 1,000 to 24, just the act of compressing it kind of added a little bit more overhead. So it wasn't worth compressing body sizes until they got up to kind of like the one kilobyte size. Uh, but once we're over that size, then we're going to do two things. First thing is we're going to set up the, the fetch body here to use this library here called Paco, uh, which has an implementation, the JavaScript implementation of gzip. Uh, so we will gzip the body down and we're going to dump that just into the, the fetch body. And then we're going to set this content header for content encoding and set it to gzip so that we know, can intercept that on the server side and decode that. So I'll just go and pull this little bit out here. Uh, so that's all that's needed really on the client side is just to set this up. So that Paco thing, I think I just included it straight up with a CDN. Uh, in my actual implementation, my application, I installed the NPM package for it and bundled it up with what I was uh, deploying to the server. Curious now if the server is just gonna know how to handle that automatically, or do you need to configure something special? I configured something special. I don't think it would know how to handle it. Um, I, I right don't expect that. that it would, but yeah. Yeah, so I actually ended up kind of over here um, in a request help. So I, I had written this request dot get body, get giant object array, uh, and then just returning it here. This is just the implementation of the, the controller. So in my implementation of this get body, which is just an extension method here, uh, what I have is I'm going to check the request headers and see if the content encoding is gzip. And if it is, let's make this two lines, it's a little bit easier to see. Ooh, maybe even three mm. lines. It's a, it's a heavy line of code right there. Yeah. Um, so what we normally do is we just read the, the body, read to end async and then deserialize it. When it's a gzip, there happens to be this very handy built-in gzip stream that I didn't even realize existed inside of system.io.compression. Uh, so all I need to do is just give it the request body, tell it to decompress it, and just read to the end of it just as I would the stream normally. Uh, so if we go and run this now, let's try going over here, it should have reloaded for me already, clear this out post a bunch of JSON here. So you can see the size here has remained the same at 26. Let's go take a look at what we sent over in Fiddler here. Okay, so here is our new send in Fiddler. So we can see that this has now dropped from 13,000 bytes to 1,114 bytes. So we cut this by a pretty significant factor, by about 90%, we've cut this body size. Uh, I mean, this was a pretty, ugly sort of body anyway. Uh, so I was sort of expecting it to compress quite nicely anyway, because uh, it just contains like all of this stuff here. Yeah, JSON's usually pretty highly compressible just mm -hmm. because of all those repeated property names and whatnot. Yeah, uh, but Fiddler actually does a good job here of even decoding this for me so I can still see what the body contains as necessary. Uh, and now our application should work a lot faster because we're sending a lot less data, like 90% less data over the wire to the server. Still getting the same sort of data back from the server. 
uh, but this has worked out pretty well for me uh, in implementation. The only change that I've had to make since deploying it is that I added kind of a global flag to the application so that I could toggle uh, compression on and off as I was debugging the application in production, right. just in case I wanted to see like what the body was inside of the, the tools here. Uh, so that has worked out pretty well too, and it's working nicely. I feel like I'm missing something that like maybe there is a better, more consistent way of doing this. Uh, well, server side, I server side i feel like there this is an opportunity for middleware i almost wonder if there isn't some yes. automatic uh, middleware that it, or like a package out there that supports this because with the configurability of the pipeline plugging that in before you before you pass it off to the controller mm -hmm. you should be able to just detect in the header if there's gzip compression yeah. and then yeah, I absolutely yeah. agree. And I think that's probably a follow-up episode is making this a little bit better. So this is just a really rudimentary demo that I wanted to do for this. My actual implementation um, is in a functions app. So I don't have quite oh. the level of control on the pipeline that I would like with that. Right. Um, I think the functions app is still on a, like a slightly older version of functions before they kind of unlocked and enabled you to plug into the pipeline a little bit more. On on the client side, though, I don't know what else you could do to, no. like, other than actively changing, like, modifying the request. I don't know that you could do anything by default. Mm -hmm. Well, this just felt like a really quick solution. Like, I had this proven out and deployed inside of an hour, probably. Nice. And I had been thinking of, like, oh, do I need to go and rename all of my JSON properties because they're really long? Uh, is it going to be worthwhile doing that? so that it's a little bit less data to send over the wire. Um, right. the compression has handled it nicely, uh, and I haven't seen any problems from it as a result of this. And most people that were complaining are not complaining as loudly anymore. <laughs> Sounds like success to me. Yeah, I mean, really, what more could you ask for as a developer to, but to hear slightly fewer complaints than average? Can you head over to the network tools in the browser? Yeah. Can you click on one of those post requests to see the details? Okay. And go to the headers. There's no content. Okay. I was checking if there was a content length on the uh, request yes. header. Yeah, no, there is on the response, I think, but I haven't seen it on the. I think the, the request oh, maybe here, content. There. Yeah, there it is. So that's yeah, your, okay. that's oh, the okay. size of your payload. Oh, there we go. Okay. So let, yeah, if I go and turn off compression again. Run that. Let's see. Let's not reload everything here. I'll send that again. Yeah, content length. Okay. There well, yeah. there we go. I'm glad that it was you that found that for me. Does that make up for making you go through all this in the first place? Uh, yeah, sure. We'll call it even. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I think that was probably everything that I wanted to show on this. Uh, I might do some follow-up episodes here, uh, but if people out there know of a better way of doing this, it doesn't feel so hacky, I'd love to hear about it. Um, and if this is actually like the way of doing it, maybe we'll roll a package or something that can be deployed out to servers. Because um, this, this might be something that we could just dynamically plug into an application through a service worker. Um, and then you just sort of get this for free on the, the client side and then on the server side, we can plug it in through the pipeline and everything would just magically work. Magic is perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us and we'll see everybody on next week's episode. Remember to like, comment, share, ask those questions in the comment section down below. Mash on that subscribe button. Did we say all the things there that we're supposed we to say? All the things and more. Nice. Right. Awesome. Thank, thanks, Simon. Cheers.